Four Wheel Drive TV is proudly presented by Superwinch, your 4x4 winch professionals, and EFS Suspension. Take control with EFS. We're here in wonderful New Zealand with Phil Clark from Superwinch. Phil, how are you today? Very good, thanks, Simon. Yourself? I'm um, pretty well, thank you. Always love coming to New Zealand. Now, you're a bit of a winch expert. Super Winch is a fairly well-known product, especially here in New Zealand. Solenoids. We hear people talking about solenoids all the time. What is a solenoid and why does a winch need a solenoid fill? Well, Simon, as you know, a winch can draw an awful lot of amperage, sometimes up to, say, 400 amps, maybe peak even higher. Yeah. Now, what you need is a switch that can basically handle that type of current without burning out. As you can imagine, to put that type of switch on a dashboard and use lightweight wiring, there's no way it'll ever handle the current. So essentially what we need is a compact switch that can move heavy current in two directions for the, both directions of the motor, power in and power out. And essentially the solenoid or relay, if you like, will provide a continuous current to the motor. The currents are very, very reliant on having a clean and regular source of amperage. So the solenoid is normally that thing that we see mounted remotely in that black plastic box? That's exactly right, Simon, yes. And what sort of solenoids are available? Are there new things on the market at the moment? Certainly the old school of solenoids is essentially what we like to call the tin can style. They look essentially like a tin can. You'd normally find more than one solenoid within the box. In some cases you might find, say, four solenoids in a box. In other cases, the manufacturer may use a double pole, double throw solenoid, so you may see two in the box. The traditional drawbacks with those solenoids is, A, of course, you've got a ferrous container. So essentially the solenoid can rust over time and thereby fail. Also when you've got two or four solenoids you're looking essentially at two or four points that can possibly fail. What we see now in the case of some of the more progressive winch manufacturers is an integrated solenoid where essentially you're doing away with four or two and you essentially have one solenoid with a non-ferrous casing so there's no issue with rust. You're generally seeing sort of an IP rated casing as well so it can be immersed, continuous current rating. With many of the other solenoids you may may find maybe only up to a 60% continuous rating or 60% duty rating if you like. The newer solenoids will take 100% duty for their rating all the time. Now Phil, I also believe with the older style of solenoid that you're basically talking 16 connection points whereas with the newer style you're talking about in that non-ferrous type box you've got much limited contact points so it is a much more economical unit. That's exactly right. It's certainly more efficient in the sense that the lesser points of contact that you have the less current you'll actually lose. Through. Now Phil, also what a lot of people out there might or might not know is that the older style of solenoids, the tin cans as you mentioned, are basically well known as marine starter motor solenoids so they're more so rated for momentary use, not for the continuous use that we need with winches. Yeah, that is right. What we're seeing a lot more with the newer integrated solenoids is essentially a higher continuous rating. Now, the possible peak amperage that some of these newer solenoids can take may be 800 amps per millisecond versus the older style solenoids with a lower continuous rating, which it really doesn't compare to the technology that they've put in place today with the new solenoids. The new solenoids available, obviously more economical, less current draw, better heat capacity, longer continuous rating, just overall a much better solenoid type. It doesn't really mean much to the average guy out there who's just got to pull himself up a hill for a few metres and get out of trouble, but for the comp guys it certainly is a huge advancement, isn't it? It definitely is, and in saying that it can also be quite important to your average club truck or your average punter who's out there in the bush. I mean, we all know a winch isn't worth anything if it falls over or fails. It's always going to be the weakest link in your winch that'll cause an issue. In many cases, Certainly traditionally that has been the electrical system so if you can take one more link out of that equation then you're going to end up with a much more reliable winch. Okay, now what about placement of the solenoids? We see a lot of the comp guys have the solenoids placed back up under the bonnet, but realistically when most people purchase a winch it comes with a solenoid pack bolted to the motor itself. It does. Placement of the solenoid is going to depend a lot upon what you're using the winch for, how often the winch is seeing immersion. The placement of solenoids under the bonnet could be construed as a little bit of an old school thing. Back in the days where realistically you didn't want to immerse your solenoids, it didn't have to. What we're seeing a lot more these days, even with OE manufacturers fitting winches to their vehicles, you may see in the case of an integrated solenoid anyway, which we've been talking about, you may actually see that mounted down in the bar with the winch, which never used to be the case because they weren't reliable. Okay, but along those lines, we've seen a couple of different styles of winches now coming out of manufacturers. You've got the older style where the solenoid pack is in the plastic box, mounted separately but still with the motor, and now a new style where the solenoid's simply mounted in a funny position over the top of the drum. There can be a couple of reasons for that. Commonly one is actually aesthetics of the winch. Generally people that are mounting winches perhaps on the front of their vehicle or out the front on the bumper, in plain sight, like the look of the solenoid enclosure over the drum. And the other reason for looking at doing that is many of the manufacturers can essentially remove the tie bars which allow them to put more wire rope on the drum without fouling the tie bars. 
Now, Phil, as you said with aesthetics, my vert certainly goes for the solenoid pack integrated into the winch itself over the top of the drum. And I like that idea of being able to put more rope on it. It certainly gives that greater flexibility with the use of the winch. But I think a concern that most people need to look at realistically when they're thinking about the winch with that type of structure compared to the older type of mounting the solenoids is actually how much room they've got in their bar to mount the winch. I believe that can be a problem. It certainly can be an issue. With the case of overhead solenoid enclosures, you will normally find that it's either very, very difficult or it's not actually possible to remote mount them. In some instances, instances you may actually have enough room behind your bar to do that but realistically why would you want to especially considering there's readily available winches with removable solenoid enclosures perhaps a little bit of thought before you go to mounting the winches in order in that case phil clark from super winch great advice great information thank you so much for your time thank you simon Bet you had it.